Part of taking responsibility as being in cabinet entails is about the ability to take decisions. The ability to take decisions, you must always understand, will not be in conditions of your own making. Jump onto a flight, go to Cape Town, arrive at lunchtime on Sunday, get shown around Parliament. People get assigned responsibilities. Comrade uh, Trevor, you will be the leader of government business. I don't know. I've never been in government, never been in parliament. I have no idea how laws work, how laws are made. Uh, so to take this responsibility on top of being a minister of trade and industry is like crazy. We get through that and then I go off, I get a car, go to the Department of Trade and Industry. I go and see the acting DG. I say to him, all right, I'm going to come here on Monday as your new minister and so on. Begin to take responsibility immediately. And I think it's very important that we recognize that there are some things that we must continue to struggle for and there are some things that we must continue to struggle against. But together they define what brings us here. It's not just the memory of what happened in the 1980s. It's about today and the future drawing from those lessons and, and taking that, that forward. Amandla! Aluta! 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 Thank you very much. I got to know the political leadership early. And that was a great privilege. Uncle Walter, when he was released, in fact, uh, I was in prison during that period, but we connected very soon thereafter. And um, we also built a, a relationship. And I think that in his case, he was such a remarkable leader. He had to be watched and, and learned from. And uh, his influence of Madiba, for instance, was so phenomenal. And he was always seen as the, the elder statesman amongst the group of Rivonia trialists. And therefore that rubbed off onto uh, the ANC more generally. And uh, you know, I think it was just a great privilege to, to learn at his feet. He was, he, was, he was quite remarkable because he was calm, <clears throat> very comfortable in who he was and what he needed to do, and uh, not focused on position. He knew that his influence didn't depend on occupying any particular position. And I think a major force. I think that also because he didn't seek to occupy high position, he could exercise the influence by virtue of being a leader and not because he occupied position. I think that, that in many ways that, that, that is a missing damage. If one looks at um, the events uh, in the ANC, and I think it has had an impact uh, on the country, there were uh, issues that should have been dealt with with hard political education uh, using the same kinds of lessons. And <clears throat> what you don't have is, is a body of elders who aren't contesting positions, but who have the experience and the interest, who are tried and tested, and uh, whose, whose presence can be made to be felt in uh, giving effect to, to a direction which is focused on common purpose in, in a democracy. I think, I think that what doesn't happen in this country is when people do wrong, they don't want to get out of the way. Whereas what good governance is about in my mind is it's about building sound institutions. Government in broad must be a sound institution. The treasury where I work must be a sound institution. It must bring people through. It must be able to replicate skills. It must have a voice. That is what a sound institution does. But sound institutions also need sound leadership. And these two things always go together. If they, it doesn't matter how good a leader you are, if you don't have an institution that you can fall back on, that can hold you to account, you can't have good government.